You're listening to Islamic Radio Station, Radio Noor, 8.10 a.m. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to the English half of the Radio Noor show. This is your host, Ayman. Today, inshallah, without delving into details or politics, I'd like to just very briefly hint at the current context we're in, due in part to bad responses to the various views non-Muslims might express about Muslims, about our beloved Prophet, peace on him, or toward Islam itself. But I will not do that to correct non-Muslims, not at all. Except that I remind everyone that outrageous reactions to such views do not represent the followers of the Prophet Muhammad, peace on him. Violence and other extremes in these cases are perpetrated only by people lost from the way of the Prophet, peace on him, or those who hate the Prophet more than anyone else does. And the identity of these people is more complicated than most are willing to admit. The Muslims, rather, typically and always should care more for how their own actions affect the reputation of their prophet than the words and representations of people who have made no commitment to the religion and who may simply be expressing what they think from an outside view. Even when or if someone's expressions are irresponsible, then the Muslims will leave this between that person and Allah, or take a chance to open a peaceful dialogue. We have more important issues to deal with in our own selves. Do we care enough, brothers and sisters, about how our actions and words bear on the face of Islam and the reputation of our beloved Prophet, peace on him? If most of us do not find lack in ourselves, that at least the best of us will. Our point today is to correct ourselves as Muslims, Allah permitting. As big and broad as these points are, and as many layers as there may be to correct as individuals and as an ummah, even the smallest actions or words can be good or bad for the face of Islam. These are the sorts of actions we'll start with by way of a talk from Abu Ibrahim Starling, insha'Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there are a number of qualities about our faith and about the Muslim Ummah in general that have distinguished it and us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the message to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved prophet and messenger with a number of layers to it. On the top of those layers is to purify belief in Allah to purify our faith from idolatry, from associating partners with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, from worshiping other things, worldly objects, to the worship of Allah alone without partner. After that is the actions, the worship, and also the manner. It is well known and documented that the Muslims throughout our history have been distinguished by their good manners, by their good morals, their sound morals and their etiquette, the way that they deal with one another, the way that they deal with people outside of their faith, the way that they deal with mankind in general, it has been and should always be stellar. It is how we distinguish ourselves amongst the rest of mankind, the way that we behave. The Prophet wasallam, he was the best of examples in this facet, in this regard. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in fact, he said in authentic hadith, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعثت لأتم ما مكارم الأخلاق He says, I have only been sent, I have only been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect and to complete noble and righteous manners. This was the essence of the Prophet ﷺ and his message, that he came to rectify 
bad manners, bad behavior, and those manners, they begin with the person's manners with Allah Azza wa And then the manners that they have with messengership and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in particular. And then the manners that that person has with themselves, Because there are manners that we have with our own self. If we respect our own self or not. And if you cannot correct the manners you have with yourself, whether you respect yourself enough or not, then you will not be able to have good manners with anyone else. And then it comes to the manners that we deal with, with our family, with our neighbors, with our, with our co-workers, and all those that are in our lives and that we meet along the way. The Prophet Sallallahu he had the best manners. He had the best of manners. It's actually reported that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَدَّبَنِي رَبِّي تَأْدِيبًا حَسَنًا He said that my Lord has cultivated me with great manners, with beautiful manners. If qala خُذِ الْعَفْوَى وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَعَارِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ In the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 199, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Show forgiveness, enjoin what is good, and turn away from the foolish. Meaning, do not take them to task and punish those that are foolish. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَلَمَّا قَبِلْتُ ذَلِكَ مِنْهُ قَالَ وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He says, when I accepted this, this order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to show forgiveness, to enjoin the good, and to turn away from the foolish, then Allah is wajal. In the Quran, a revelation, the last of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preserved from that time until Yawm Al-Qiyamah, those words will be preserved that he is the example of the best manners. إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He has exalted, glorified manners, the best manners that one could have. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the example. It was said by Ali radiallahu anhu wa atiyah, they said, huwa adabu al-Qur'an, the manners of the Qur'an, Allah's book. This was also reported by Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that his manners were like the Qur'an. His manners were like that of the Qur'an. So you can see something here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his companions, they reported similar words, that his manners were that of the manners of the Qur'an. So his public life, those that saw him and interacted with him outside of the home, they testified that he had the best manners. And also inside of the home, his own spouse, Aisha radiallahu anha, she testified that in the house as well, he had the best manners. So outside and inside, there was not a difference, brothers and sisters, honestly speaking. Our manners are often better when we leave the house than when we are inside, when we're comfortable, when we're relaxed. We've just been with our spouse for 10, 15, 20 years. We don't need to be that great anymore. We're married. It's over. We already won. We already got married. We show them good manners in the beginning. And then it begins to slowly drift away. The Prophet Wasallam was never of that type that he would let go of good manners. It's interesting. Khuluq which is the Arabic term for manners, I guess, or etiquette. Khuluq is directly related to khalq, which is creation. You've heard in the Quran this word over and over again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the khaliq, he khalaqa, he created. And the creation is called khalq. The relation between these two words, khalq and khuluq, they say, that khuluq, which are the manners, is something that a person has to observe. They have to have good manners. And they do it constantly and continuously as if it was part of their khuluq. That these good manners, this khuluq, hasan, it is something that the person does constantly and continuously so that everyone else thinks that that's how you were created. But the reality is that no. Akhlaq. It is something that is given. It is something that we are blessed with by Allah. 
The Prophet وسلم, he used to pray for good manners. And all success is with Allah. There's no power nor might except by Allah. The Prophet وسلم, was reported in a hadith in Musnad Imam Ahmad. And Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi fa ahsin khuluqi His wife Aisha radiallahu anha she used to say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would pray saying Oh Allah who has beautified my my creation So we know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most beautiful of Allah's creation As you have beautified my creation also beautify my manners. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would also say as reported in Sunnah Abi Dawood when Nasai on Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu Qala kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yad'u fa yaqulu Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shiqaqi wa nifaqi wa su'i al-akhlaq The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only prayed for good manners but he prayed for protection against bad manners. Foulness, lewdness, crudeness, and rudeness. And he would say, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. From shiqaq, from nifaq, and from poor manners, su'il akhlaq. That he would pray to be protected from bad manners. This is something that requires prayer, brothers and sisters. It requires prayer, and it requires a great deal of action, of striving, of struggling. Manners. They are something that has to be imposed on the self. It's not something that just happens. You wake up and you find yourself more patient. You wake up and you find yourself with a better tone of voice, more polite words. You don't just wake up and it happens. You don't sit down and eat vitamins or take medicine and it changes your demeanor and manner. But it is something that you have to force yourself that you have to train yourself. We train ourselves for many things. There are many things that we force upon ourselves and train ourselves to do. We go to school, we go to college, we go to university, we take courses, we go to workshops to qualify for certificates for our job, to stay abreast of our industry. We send our children to learn sports and to the end of it, we train ourselves. We impose upon ourselves development and growth manners is also something that has to be imposed upon the self it is something you have to struggle with it is something that you have to have an intention to do it's not enough to say that's just who I am that's just my nature that's just the way I was born I have a short fuse I have a short temper I'm hot-headed I'm impatient this is not a justifiable excuse for poor behavior. To say such words, this is just who I am. The reality, brothers and sisters, is it may be who you have become. But it does not mean it is who you have to be. These things can be changed. The Prophet wasallam, giving instruction to his companions, and he was very, very concern with his companion's manner. He said to them, reported an authentic hadith in Sunnah Tirmidhi on Abi Dharrin radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. He says, fear Allah wherever and whenever you are. He says, fear Allah whenever and wherever you are. And then he goes on and he says, He says, follow up a bad deed with a good deed and it will remove it. It will erase it. Then he finishes this hadith, And show good manners to people. Have good manners with people. If you look at this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Khaliqin nas. Here. This is important for us to, to grasp this concept because it is absent at times. He says, nas, people. Have good manners with people, nas, mankind, human beings. If they're a human, 
then they're deserving of good manners. It doesn't matter. They're the same color, same creed, same language, same ethnicity, same country. None of that matters when it comes to manners. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't say, and show good manners to your family only, or to your tribe only, or to your countrymen only, or to your friends only. But he says, an-nas, to mankind. Regardless if they're Muslim or not Muslim, regardless if they are male or female, rich or poor, black or white, Arab, non-Arab, Desi, non-Desi, it doesn't matter what the person or who the person is, manners, good manners, have to be displayed with them and dealt in that manner. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is very difficult. This is the challenge that we face all the time. It's to, it's to hold on to ourselves and to constantly be mindful of this. But with things that are difficult, of course, there is a great reward. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, poor and authentic hadith, he says on Abi Darda radiallahu anhu, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maqal, ma shay'un athqalu fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyama min khuluqin hasin. He says there is nothing heavier in the scale of the believer on yawm al-qiyama, the last day, than good manners. There is nothing heavier for the believer in their scale on Yawm Al-Qiyamah than to have good manners. He went on and says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَا يُبْغِضَ الْفَاحِشَ الْبَذِيءِ And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, He is angry with and dislikes the one who is obscene and abusive. The one who is obscene and abusive. To be obscene with your words, to be abusive with your words, and also obscene and abusive with your nonverbal communication. You can say one thing, but another person will understand it differently by the tone of your voice and the position of your body. All of these things come into account. Brothers and sisters, this khuluq hasan, the Prophet wasallam, he came to complete and to perfect it is a source of salvation for us as believers. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthari ma yudkhil al-nas al-jannah faqala taqwa Allah wa husnu al-khuluq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, what is the thing which enters people into the paradise the most? What is the thing which will enter us into the paradise the most? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, taqwa of Allah, to have fear and all to be pious and to have good manners. I قول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله حمد كثير طيبا مباركا في كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet's manners, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they crossed over all borders and boundaries. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he displayed good manners to his family, his friends, his loved ones, his companions, his followers, his neighbors, strangers, and even his enemies. He had good manners with. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a great example. It is the best in him is our example, the best example to learn from manners and what it means to have good manners. This is our lens that we should be looking through. Adopting the manners of the Prophet وسلم, those manners, they are beautiful. And not adopting other manners that are out there customs and cultures and things of that nature, some of it is fine because it agrees with our legislation. But everything must be measured with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That which may be considered fine and acceptable right now, today, in this location, in this country, it may not be acceptable in the manner and etiquette of the Muslim. So it is something that we will stay away from and refrain from. To set an example Brothers and sisters, that's our reality right now. 
whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, whether you want the responsibility or you don't, you are an example. You are a focal point for your community. If they know that you're Muslim, they're going to associate everything that you do with your faith and with us. Akhi, you're representing me as well. You're representing the one sitting next to you. You're representing wherever country you came from, if you came from another country. They will look at you and they will judge you and they will judge Islam based upon your character. So what picture are you going to give them? What picture are you going to give them? If you give them a good picture, it could lead them to accepting Islam. They would see a good example. And throughout the history of Islam and the Muslims, you'll see that this was one of the most profound and impacting ways that people became Muslim through the example of righteous, well-mannered believers. Brothers and sisters, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, language, culture, color, or creed, it does not matter. Our manners, they are international. They are international. We should be concerned with others' feelings. We should be concerned with people's feelings. Someone you're talking with, your boss, your coworker, the parking attendant outside. You should be concerned with their feelings. Were you abusive? Were you rude? Were you short? Were you ill-mannered and tempered with them? Did they walk away feeling slighted and abused? We should be concerned with people's health and their safety. Are we endangering the lives of others? That is not good manners, not by a long shot. To be irresponsible in that regard is totally unacceptable. We should be concerned about the general well-being of people, regardless of who they are. Brothers and sisters, this means that we have to be mindful. It has to be, we have to be mindful of what we say and what we do. We cannot afford to be bad examples, especially in this climate. We cannot afford to be bad examples. Bad examples are already there. And I'm sure that most of you will agree that there are enough bad examples to suffice us for a thousand years. There are already enough. What we need now is good examples. We need to change the tide. We need good examples from our community and that begins individual level. Each and every one of us have a responsibility. Each and every one of us have a responsibility in this regard. We cannot be rude, loud, aggressive, use foul language. Brothers and sisters, my respected brothers and sisters, English, it might be your second language. And congratulations to you for learning a second language. But the foul language, the, the obscene words in English, they have just the same weight of obscenity that they do in your own language. You should not take them as being light. Oh, this isn't my language. <laughs> that don't mean much to me, this word and that word. Because you will find prevalent amongst many of our community members, they use these words that they picked up from their job and their co-workers, obscene words, and they don't give it much weight because it's not my language. Everyone says it. Everyone says these words. If they are obscene, regardless of the language, they should be avoided. Put your best foot forward. Cursing, abusing, harming, backbiting. Backbiting is, of course, not good manner. And slandering. Brothers and sisters, an incident took place here, and I have to mention this. I'll interrupt here briefly. The brother will mention a specific issue that happened at the Islamic Center where he is. But I'm leaving it in the show because we can easily transpose it to our masajid where so many times very similar issues happen. Ad deen al nasiha The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says that Islam, this deen, it is sincere, sincere advice. An incident took place because this is home here. This is home for us. It took place in our home, so we have to have some housekeeping some cleaning up of sorts, some reorganizing and thought management. 
As many of you know, when you pull into the drive here, there are parking attendants to help us park our cars in the appropriate places so that we do not park in an illegal place, which would be our neighbor's parking lot, which has happened in the past. Unfortunately, last week, someone tried to park in an illegal parking place, our neighbor, which would harm them and their business, their customers. So the parking attendant politely asked them to move their car. You cannot park here. This is not the right parking place. You have to go down. And the person got upset. They were irritated. Perhaps they were late. Maybe they were worried about walking a far distance. Brothers and sisters, walking to the place of prayer is great reward in that. If you end up parking far away, don't get upset. Think about the rewards that you will get by taking each step closer to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform your prayers. If you are late, then do not blame others. It is not anyone's problem but your own, and your irritation and frustration of yourself should not be taken out on others. You should be angry with yourself and try to improve that by coming on time or early. If you need a close parking place, come early and there are plenty. There are plenty of parking places around the building if you want to be close to the building. But it is unacceptable to take your frustration out on someone who is working for the center, working to serve us. I don't know the details of the story, but I was told that he almost was run over by that man or woman driving the car. They were so angry and frustrated by him asking them to move the car that they angrily got back in and took off, almost running him over. What example, what picture are we giving? People that come here all of the time, working for us, helping facilitate our Friday prayer. We have an obligation to teach them, to show them, to guide them, not to run them away. Here's your little money and go. I don't care about you anyway. You're not this, you're not that. Not the right person for me to interact with. Please, brothers and sisters, we are better than that. We are the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to be better than that. Otherwise, it would be a shame, shame, shame. So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to purify our hearts, to purify our deeds, to guide us to that which He loves and is pleased with. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين